Uh, welcome along. Um, and today I have uh, Julio Delgado all the way from Colombia um, to talk about his wonderful country. Now, my experience of Colombia has only been fairly recent. I went for the first time two years ago. And despite what you might think, and I'm sure Julio will talk about that side of things as well, but despite what you might think, it's actually not what people expect. You know, it's actually a really, you know, friendly country. Um, I, I found myself amongst friends immediately. And, you know, for example, I, I was in Colombia just before lockdown and I met with Julio. And I, I don't think we've ever met before Julio, have we? No, 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 no. Just it, that day. Yeah, just it's about day. meeting my brother, you know. Oh, you yeah. know, we've been known each other for a long time, you know, so. <laughs> Julio, welcome along. Thank you for coming. Um, what, where are you in Colombia at the moment? Right now I'm in Cali where I live, David. Yeah. I live in Cali, where actually where we met at the, at the Colombia Bird Fair. Yeah, just for those who don't know, every year I go to Cali um, in February for the Colombia Bird Fair, for which I am this year, I was the honorary president, but mm -hmm. I'm usually just an ambassador for the bird fair. And I love that bird fair because it's very urban. It's actually held in the zoological gardens. And mm -hmm. the great thing about it is it's one of the very few bird fairs around the world that actually has, you know, has it in an urban area and actually is reaching out to people who aren't birders, you know, reaching out to general people to come and get them involved. Because many bird fairs around the world are very much for people who know what they're doing already. So you're not really spreading the message. You're just basically talking to the converted. So yeah. let me talk to you and give you a brief introduction to Julio. Julio, he gave up a lucrative career in advertising, uh, working as a jingles uh, music composer, go birding eight years ago and never looked back. So tell me about your jingles. What kind of jingles did you used to do? Oof, I did jingles for, for many things. I, I, at those days, I used to live in Bogota, where like the big advertising companies are. And, and I did, you know, jingles for banks, for even for soap operas. I, I composed music for soap operas, documentaries, and yeah, and many, many products, you know, in, here in Colombia. You know, in, in the UK, we are very famous for our jingles, especially back uh -huh. in the 70s and 80s. I mean, there's, you know, a lot of us that grew up during that era, and I'm sure there's some people here today. Um, yeah. You remember all the jingles even from then. I, I've got one in my head now. Opal fruits <laughs> make, made to make your mouth water. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sure there's here one. Sorry? Here. Here in Colombia, it's pretty much the same. You know, there is jingles. And actually, that's one of the reasons why I quit. You know, imagine working the whole day in a very catchy line and you go back at home and you go to sleep. You know, you put your blanket and what you hear in your head, the same catchy line all over again for hours. Yeah. So <laughs> that basically, that's one of the many reasons why I, I quit uh, working in advertising. Okay, so in March 2018, um, you went on a piculet birding expedition. Now, for those who don't know, yeah. a piculet is a, a very small woodpecker, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It is. Tiny woodpecker. It's like the size of a finch, uh, more or less, you know? It may be even smaller. Yeah, I mean, there's many different species of piculet, by the way. It's just a, a subfamily of woodpeckers. And uh, close to Macau, Macau, Putumayo, 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 yeah. Um, and you photographed for the first time in Colombia a new species for the country. Tell us about that bird. Well, that was, you know, a very nice experience because actually that was my first time in Putumayo. For for those who doesn't know, Putumayo is like Amazon lowlands, you know, close to the border with Ecuador, you know. So I was scouting there with, with a couple of friends from America. And, and we went there. We were, re actually, it was urban birding, my friend. <laughs> it was in a very, you know, like a populated area. And we were birding there with a local guide. And the local guide, he showed us a bird. And he told us that it was an antenna jet. So how I normally do, I shoot first 
and ask the question later. So I shoot a couple of pictures and I was going through the pictures. I, I noticed the bird didn't fit in the description the local guide gave me. So I started looking in the field guide and nothing matches. So fortunately, I was going to talk with uh, Miles McMullen like a couple of days later. So I went to Miles and I asked him like, hey, Miles, uh, look these pictures. What do you think it is? And he told me, my friend, <laughs> this is a bird that is not registered here in Colombia. I think it's the red crested finch. And so we, I, I posted like in a, in a chat we have with, with, with the, like the hot shot birders in Colombia. Um, and everybody agreed it was the, the red crested finch. So, so it was a very, you know, fortunate trip. <laughs> yeah, sounds it. And just to recap for everyone, Miles Mullen, who Julio mentioned, is like a guru, uh, a birding guru who actually comes from uh, Northern Ireland. Yep. And he, uh -huh. he settled in Colombia. I've met him several times. He's a real, you know, what I love about birding with him is that you, he points out a, a bird and he actually tells you why it's there and what it feeds on and all that sort of stuff. And <laughs> he's incredible. Not saying, yeah. you're, not saying that you aren't, Julio, but he's incredible. Um, yeah, he is, he is. No, he's like a li walking library, you know? He knows yeah. about so many things. Yeah, and he's a great artist as well. So yeah. you, you've been working as a local guide all over Colombia for many uh, birding companies and, uh -huh. um, and also the, uh, the Columbia Bird Fair, of course. Uh -huh. um, so tell me about your early days. How did you get interested in nature and, uh, and, and birding? Because I don't think that's a, a very common thing back yeah. in, you know, when you were younger when, in, in, in Colombia, was it? Since I was a kid, you know, since I was a kid, I always was uh, interested in birds. Whenever I heard like a call, uh, I, I stood and watched which bird was calling. And, and slowly I, I began to get deeper and deeper into birding uh, till there was like a chance to, to, to begin like properly learning about birding. I went and, and spent some days in, in Santa Marta mountains, like a couple of months there with, with a birding guy there. And, and that's how I got like really hooked up in, in, in birding, you know? That's how I got really interested in birding. Okay, um, just one more question before you show us about Colombia. Um, are there a lot of people now interested in birding in Colombia? There is. Birders in Colombia? There, is. there is a lot of people, unfortunately, a lot of young people that is interested in birding. You know, a lot of kids, a lot of, uh, you know, people in his 20s, in his 30s that, uh, that are really interested in birding. Birding is growing exponentially here in Colombia. And the other question is, I mean, I've been to Brazil a couple of times and I realized uh -huh. that in Brazil, there's such a high tax on binoculars that a lot of people can't yes. afford to buy binoculars. Is that the same situation in Colombia? The, it is. It is. Binoculars here are expensive, you know. So at the beginning, a lot of people begin with, you know, maybe uh, cheap binoculars. Uh, but, but nevertheless, they start and, and slowly... They are, they change their, their opticals, their opticals. Yeah. I mean, I, I, when I was in Colombia in February, I was in uh, San Cipriano, which is, oh, not, yeah. Yeah. Not too far from uh, Colombia. And from it's a, Cali. sorry, Colombia, from Cali. From Cali. Yeah, and it's basically, um, an area of sort of, uh, forest on the, on the, on the, on the mountain, isn't it? Right? And yeah, it's, it's like a hill. Uh -huh. Yeah. On a, on a hill. And basically the, the residents there are descendants, direct descendants of slaves. Yes, my friend. They're black um, and they're very friendly, you know, nice people. But there were one or two that are really, you know, were good guides, local guides. And one of them didn't even have a pair of binoculars, you know, but he was yeah. still spotting things. It's incredible how that, that can work. And those guys have like super eyes, you know, yeah. or like incredible eyes. The, it's the same in the Amazon lowlands with, with indigenous people as well. It's, it's very similar. I don't know why, maybe, I think they probably, they used to be hunters before and they have like really sharp eyes for details, for movement. 
and and they spot they are incredibly good spotters you know yeah well i'm gonna let you tell us about colombia i mean there's a couple of places i absolutely i mean apart from the urban birding in cali and san uh -huh. cipriano i also love san so 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 lagoon which is like absolutely amazing i hope i hope you talk about it so yeah let's 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 have a look at um at colombia before that <laughs> Does anyone have any questions at this point before um, Julio tells us a bit more about Colombia? Okay, you're all good then. Okay, over to you, okay. Julio. Okay, my friend, let me share the screen. Here. Okay, is it working? Yeah, it's beautiful, yeah. Okay, I began with, with this picture because it's pretty much one of the most famous scenes in Colombia. And it's going to be basically like a teaser because I'm not going to talk about this place, but I'm going to just plant the seed for maybe another occasion. This is the view you get in the Santa Marta mountains. This is the view you got from the top of San Lorenzo's Ridge. Okay. So, in this, basically, we're going to do like a like a 14, 15 days tour uh, close to Cali. Uh, we are going to go into the Choco bioregion, which is one of the most rainiest and biodiverse areas in the world. And then crossing through the Western Andes, uh, passing through maybe a couple of tropical uh, dry forests. Uh, birds and places and and again and we're going to end in the central andes in the paramo you know so let's begin let's see what we have here uh, I don't, let me see how why is that? oh there you go okay here we're going to start with this is the first bird we're going to talk about this is the tucan barbet which we can see in a place called Doña Doras, which is uh, actually Doña is like Miss Dora. Uh, Dora is a wonderful, working, hardworking woman that has like a, a place that we're going to see. This is the place, this is Doña Dora's place. Actually, I'm here with a couple of very good friends from Spain. Maybe David knows them. Uh, this is Jose Luis Copete and, and, and Ferran. And here, this is the, the backyard of Miss Doras, where we can see the, the, the Tucan Barbet, where we can see this bird here, which is uh, one of the most handsome birds I have seen, you know. Uh, actually, one of my favorite barbet. Mm, this he has actually a nest in, in Miss Dora's backyard. So it's, it's an amazing place to go. Uh, and, and it's basically, it's ideal for photography, you know, for photography, it has a lot of feeders. This guy here, it's a, I, I, I picked it because it's, it's a little homer that a lot of people confuses are two very similar hummingbirds that overlap, you know, in distribution. The blue-chested and this one, which is the purple-chested hummingbird. And it's very, uh, like the best way I personally do to identify them both, because it, it, of course it shows a little bit of blue in the chest and or vibe, but the real, like the field mark, the real field mark is the vent. If you see the vent, this one has like a white vent and the, and the blue chested has like a scaled vent. You know, like, to, sorry to interrupt, but just to explain for those who don't know what the vent is, it's the undertail covert. So basically it's exactly. that white triangle behind the twig. between you uh -huh, Like a triangle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly. That's like the best field mark for, for this bird. This is the purple chested hummingbird. Here is the same place at Doña Doras uh, with, a, with a crew of photographers from the United States. 
this is a very like a very uh, iconic and I would say common bird in in the Chuco Bayou region. This is the chestnut headed or pendula. This is a fantastic bird that has like a unique call. I really love the calls of the oropendulas. It's very, for me, hard to describe this call, but it's like a glassy sound. Like a, uh, it's, it's whenever you hear the call of, of the chestnut headed oropendula, you won't forget it. It's very hard to describe, but. Can you imitate it? Sound. Can no. You <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. No, it's very hard. I can imitate some other ones, but this one, no. No, this is, this is very hard to imitate. Okay. This is the chestnut headed or pendula, which when you are at, at Doña Dora's house, you can see actually nest hanging. They, in Spanish, we call these birds mochileros. Mochileros comes from the word mochila, which means like a back, you know, like a, like an egg, egg shape back or like a tear shape back and that's how the the shape the, the nest of these guys is you know the the the, the nest are very in that shape like a tear you know like this this i like this picture because this is a, a picture taken uh, into the primary forest of the anchicaya valley you know i think very Less and less, you can see forests like this, you know, like this primary forest, like bursting with life, you know, in very rainy areas with very tall trees. It's a, an spectacular to be in this forest. This is a, a Niger, one of my favorite Nigers. Actually, I, yeah, I took that, that picture also in, in that Anchicaya road, or that we called also the old Buenaventura road. This is, first we came from Cali and we went to Doña Dora's place. Right now we're going closer to the Pacific, heading to San Cipriano, you know? We're heading to San Cipriano and in this way you can find this bird, which is very, it's a beautiful bird. Uh, you know, normally you can see it uh, the best time to see it is at, at, at dusk, you know, when it's just started to, to getting dark a little bit. And, and you, you need to know where, where to find them. Normally they, they nest close to cliffs, like rocky cliffs. And whenever you're close to one of those that you know there might be there, you can uh, use the playback a little bit with, with careful. And, and then they will start coming and flying, showing those and, and see them flying with those like feathers in the tail is amazing. It's a nice spectacle. You know, you, you just what you only will see the silhouette of the bird flying in the sky. You know, are you it, sorry, is that a liar tailed nightjar? Yeah, yes, a liar tailed nightjar. Uh huh, liar tailed nightjar. Uh, this one, I, I took it recently this picture i took like just before lockdown i took this picture okay so let's see what what else this is one of my favorites actually this picture i took it very close to san cipriano this is the red cap mannequin you know as as you probably some of you know uh, mannequins are very interesting birds which unique this place, you know. These ones dances in a very beautiful way, you know. They, they, for example, if my arm is the branch, they like do like this. This is the, my hand it would be like the, like the leg. So they, they display like this, moving, making movement like this. It's beautiful bird and very hard to get, very, they're not very abundant. Uh, you very few places you might find them and you must have a little bit of patience to to get these guys beautiful beautiful birds this species was made famous i think by david attenborough because it was on one of his um, oh yeah in his documentary yeah 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 it's totally yeah i have seen that documentary it's, it's a beautiful one i choose this picture because <laughs> it's a funny picture you know but it's 
I'm, I'm trying to get you like in the mood of the place, you know. Choco Bioregion is one of the most rainy areas. So if you come to Colombia and if you come to the Choco Bioregion, bring your rain gear because most probably it's going to rain at some point, okay? So that's, that's, that's what I want to put this picture. And, and it's nice to see also the vegetation, no? The cecropias. This is like the roof of, of, of a house where we used to photograph a lot of tanagers, you know, like choco specialty tanagers. In this, in this cecropias here, there are some long fruits where you can get fantastic pictures of tanagers. Okay, let's continue. Another of my favorites. This was, yeah, I, I think there is people who wait for this picture for a long time. And I was lucky last year with, with some friends, they, they were, we were birding just guides. We went birding just for fun in the, in, in the Chocoba region in Anchicaya Valley. And we were heading to, to take a, a bath in, in the middle of the day, you know, to take a, a swim in the river. So, of course, I, even if I'm going to take a swim in the river, I'm bringing my camera. <laughs> so, so, we were walking and we find this beautiful crested owl and his, and his chick. Actually, we saw the chick first. You know, we were walking and, and something moved like in the floor and, and we noticed it was the chick. They were in April. It's a beautiful time because they, like the chicks are beginning to, to learn to, to fly. So they're a little bit clumsy and you will find a, a couple of them in the floor. Uh, and that's how we found the, the father. You know, they were, it was amazing because when we noticed the, the chick, uh, we were wondering what to do and we decided to to leave the chick alone because the i i told them to my friends the the, the parents must must be around the like the the parents of this chick must be around and as soon as i told that like one of the parents make like a small sound like Ooh! and that's how we <laughs> we noticed the the parents were there and it it, it was a beautiful moment Believe this is not a, an easy picture to get because normally you see them at night and, and it's completely different. This is another of, of my favorite owls. This is the, the spectacled owl. I, I want you guys to, to check it out like the chest and the powerful legs this, this owl has. You know, it's, it's an amazing, beautiful, like semi diurnal owl. And, and here it was the same, the same thing. It was also April, so the chick was learning to, to fly. And that's how we spot this, this, this spectacle out. Of course, having respect for, for the chick and for the situation with in, in the distance. This is also one of my favorites from the Chocobio region. This is here we are getting closer to, to the ocean. Here, for example, I took this picture about, I don't know, maybe 300 meters, may, maybe less, like 200 meters above the sea level. This is the blue cotinga. Very hard to get. And, and just in, in very small places, you can, you can get this bird. And it's, it's a fantastic bird, you know, like cotingas is one of my favorite families. Uh, these very colorful, beautiful birds, you know, beautiful, like even the Andean cock of the rock, the cock of the rock is part of the Cotinga family. They're beautiful, amazing birds. This one here is the spot crown barbet, another of, of the barbets, beautiful one as well. He, he, was, he was having fruits from that place, in the roof, I, I, I told you, we took that picture in that place. He was eating from those acropias. This is another favorite of the, of the Chocoba region, the, the scarlet and white tanager. It's another of the, of the birds people look the most for in, in this place. 
And here is the place that you went, David. This is the San Cipriano River. I recognize it. No? Yeah, this is, is, is I, I put this picture because I, I like to give you guys also an idea of the environment, not just shots of the birds, but also like, like, like landscape pictures so that this, this river is crystal clear all year long. Even, even if it rains, it's clear, you know, it's, it's, it's a beautiful river and, and in some places it can be even 10 meters deep. You know, it, it, it's a big river. This is the San Cipriano River and this is an amazing birding spot, uh, actually where you can find lots of, of ant birds. I, I saw Robert, Robert went also to that place, which I think is in, in, in the room with us. Uh, it's an amazing place to go. Ah, actually, this is Robert here in San Cipriano. <laughs> here we were spotting uh, ant birds, as as you can see. Ant birds normally are skulky birds. They 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 like to stay like in the in the bushes. So here is Robert and here is Juan, and we were trying to get one of those ant birds. A little bit out just to to take a look. This is one of those. This is the spot crowned ant vireo, which is a very handsome uh, bird from the ant bird family. You know, I I, I really love these birds because uh, I love the songs and I love the behavior. You know, they are very very territorial. Whenever you play the song, they come right away. They're very nice birds. This is a, like a, a collage with different birds from, from San Cipriano and the, and the Chocobaya region. Here, for example, at the left, we have the Scarlet Tyke Dagnes, which is a, a beautiful bird. Here, this one here is the chestnut-backed ant bird, crimson-bellied woodpecker, tooth-billed hummingbird here to the left down below this one is the white flanked ant train and this one here is the bicolored ant bird all those are very interesting birds from san cipriano beautiful for example the crimson bellied woodpecker is a very hard to get one it's very hard to get that bird this one is also another skulker this is the black-headed ant thrush and normally you can see them like at, I would say the best time of the day to see this kind of birds is at, it's at dawn, uh, at sunrise. Here in this picture it was maybe 5.45 a.m. It was a little bit dark so we took this picture with a flashlight. Very beautiful and, and skulky bird with, with a unique song goals. This is how, how you were saying, David, the San Cipriano. And a lot of the, of the places in the Chocoba region, uh, the people is Afro-descendant people, you know, that people that came from slavery and at some point they run away and they cross the Western Andes to basically to, to stay away from people, you know, from white people. Um, and and these are the descendants of of those of those of those people very nice i have a lot of friends in in san cipriano very nice people always smiling always happy and dancing you know this very whenever i think san cipriano has one characteristic which is that whenever you go to San Cipriano you you come out of San Cipriano feeling I don't know 10 years younger you know because the people in San Cipriano show you how how easy it is to live happy you know how whenever you live like a simple life you know just going to the river fishing a little bit having fun with your friends taking a swim into the river you know that remember it uh, makes you remember how easy it is to be happy that's that's like for me one of the best lessons from san cyprian this is the slaty tailed trogon 
Also, I took this picture in San Cipriano, a beautiful, you know, the Trogon families, all of them are beautiful. This one is one of the rarest in, in this area. This is another tanager, the silver, silver and gold tanager. Beautiful, beautiful tanager. Here, yeah, now we, we make an exchange. This bird is not from Chocobay region. To get this picture, you have to move from San Cipriano, cross the Western Andes, and get into the Cauca Valley, you know, between the Western and the Central Andes. In, in the valley, in the Cauca River Valley, there are a lot of tropical, well, not a lot because it's the most endangered ecosystem. There are few tropical dry forest ecosystems. And this bird is from that ecosystem. I took this picture in a place called uh, the Grape Park. There is like a, like a aloe vera plantation. Actually, if you see here, this yellow, uh, like leaves here in, in, in to the left. This is an aloe vera flower. So this is a bird from the tropical dry forest. You might also find this bird in the, in the Caribbean coast. In the Caribbean coast, you can find this bird as well. Okay, now here we are in the Andes again. Here we are in the Andes. This is the endemic Colombian chachalaca. One of the, I, th I think you probably saw this one when you were here in Cali. I did, yeah. David. Got it. Yeah. The, actually, now uh, here that we are with you, the urban birder, this is a bird you can find in the in the city. You know, close to where I live, the you you can see and hear the the chachalacas. This one here is an ear endemic. This one here is the scrub tanager. Also, you can find this one in the in the in the urban areas. In the urban areas, he loves basically, yeah, like, uh, like the lowlands and also elevations. Still, I would say eighteen hundred meters above the sea level. No more than that. This is the black cap tanager. This is more like in the cloud forest area. It's a beautiful manager that you can find in, in, in many different places in Colombia. I took this one in, in, in La Minga. I don't know if you went to, to that thing, uh, David. Did you went to La Minga? No, I don't think so. No? Okay. Yeah, this is the Western Andes. The same, this one. This is the, the blue neck manager. Beautiful manager. No, manager is, managers and homers, I think is one of the, most attractive birds for for people that come overseas. And this one is the endemic multicolor tanager, which is like the jewel of the crown here in the Cauca Valley. <laughs> it's one of the of the birds of the birds we love the most. Here we moved a little bit more. Uh, we, we get out of the Cauca Valley province and we got into Risaralda province. These mountains are part of the Tatama National Park and in a place called Montezuma Road or Montezuma Lodge. This is the view that you see from the top of the mountain. These, actually these mountains are called the Tatama, which means like the grandfather of the rivers. In, in native language, which is a beautiful name. I love that name. There in the top of the mountain, we should be something, let me think, like uh, probably 2,000, 2,800 meters above the sea level. And there you might find this another endemic, the chestnut bellied flower piercer. It's a beautiful bird. Flower piercers have uh, a very unique thing. They, as, as the name says, with that hooked uh, bill they have, they rip the flowers and drink from the nectar. Uh, they make like a hole in the base of the flowers and they drink from the nectar in those flowers. 
And many hummingbirds use later those holes <laughs> also to, to drink from, from the flower. It's a, it's a beautiful thing from, from those guys. This is another of the handsome birds of, of the Tatama, higher elevation mountains. This is the Pruplish mantle tanayo, another near endemic from with Ecuador. Beautiful, beautiful tanayo. And this, this one is an, another endemic. This is uh, the gold ring tanayo, like is basically like the icon of, of the Tatama mountains. Basically is like the icon from those mountains. This one is another very interesting bird. It's called the Munchika wood wren. The Munchika wood wren. It, it has a beautiful, beautiful song. I, I, I think it's the song I love the most from, from the wrens. It's a, a beautiful bird. It's called Chaos all of those wrens. Here we, have, here we are at, at the top of the mountain with, with my friend Robert. And and the guy, the girl that is in, in the middle, she's the the daughter of the owner of the owner of the lodge. It's this family has a very interesting uh, story. You know, they they were uh, in the times of 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 the violence. They were they came to this place, running from that violence. And they settled down and, and began all the process that has something like more 20 years or more, like becoming a lodge, you know, learning uh, and, and building all, all that, all what they have built. It's, it's a beautiful process of that family, of the family of Montezuma Lodge or Montezuma Road. These are other of the icons of the Andes, the torrent duck, male and female. This is this one here is the male, this is the female. I I find those those dogs fascinating. Actually, I'm I'm trying to do a documentary about this dog because I I love the behavior of of, of these animals, you know, and, and they're getting in danger more and more. You know, they're losing the habitat they just use something like two kilometers in, in a like in a semi flat area from from the rivers in the mountains and they need like really really clean water to to live they are very beautiful birds and shy very shy this is another of of the shy <laughs> birds that you normally see this is the tony breasted tinamo which this, believe it or not, is a great picture of a tinamo <laughs> because they are so, so skulky, so hard to get. You know, the, normally you, you, the tinamus, you hear them more than, than you see them. They're, they're very, because they, they are terrestrial and whenever, whenever you get close to them, they, they run away. They're very... Beautiful birds indeed. And he, these ones are another of the favorites of the people that come here to Colombia, the Anpitas, you know. In the Central Andes, well, in, in, in many places in Colombia, you will find Anpitas here in the Western Andes, everywhere. But in the Central Andes, the, there is like a high concentration of them, and you can see a lot of species. Of, of these anpitas. This one is the slate crowned anpita. This one is the undulated anpita, which is one of the, of the biggest. And this is one of the handsomest, the crescent faced anpita. Beautiful bird. And, and right now, close to Manizales, you will find like very f actually famous places like Rio Blanco where they have uh, feeding stations for the anpitas. Where you, in Rio Blanco, for example, you can get, I don't know, at least four species of anpitas. And from there you move very close to another place where you can get another two species. And basically in one or two days, you can get at least seven species of anpitas, which I think is, 
is kind of remarkable. It's, it's not, it, it's a big deal. This is the a nest of the bronze Inca we got in the in the last tour. Oh, this one is the colored Inca. This is more higher, a little bit higher elevations, about the 2,500 meters above the sea level. And this is one of my, my favorites, the rainbow bearded thornbill. This is one is a little bit higher. Here you should be at least 3,000 meters above the sea level. Above the sea. This is one of the, oof, the most beautiful birds I have ever seen. Check it out. Check it out there, like the rain, the name is perfect. Rainbow bearded thornbill. This one is the sparkling violeteer, another beautiful hummingbird. Normally they, when they're displaying or showing territoriality, they open these feathers here, like in the, like in the chicks. This is a white cap tanager, beautiful. Tanager for from higher altitudes. This is more like from the Furnaridae family, the stout built in clothes. He he likes to nest in, in these cleaves, in these rocky cleaves. This is another very interesting bird, which is the gray breasted mountain toucan. I like this picture <laughs> of the condor. This picture was taken close to Cali, you know, in, in the central Andes, but you know, in other place that is close to Popayan, where they feed the condors. And, and it's, it's nice to see the, like for example, the different incisors with the black vulture, which is standing next to him. And yeah, just to give it scale for people in England, the black vulture, yeah. the black vulture is probably the size of a, of a buzzard in England. So it just shows a difference in size. Yeah, exactly. and, 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 and you, can, you can tell how big the, the Andean condor is. It's, uh, and see this, this bird, you know, like soaring above you is it's a thrilling experience, really. Okay. And now we're getting to the end. The, we're going to close with this amazing hummingbird, which is the puffy helmet crest. One of the helmet crest, the oxypogon uh, hummingbirds, which are like higher elevation hummingbirds. These, these, these hummers are really in danger right now, you know, because of habitat loss. And, and actually one of them was, was believed extinct and, and, and it was like rediscovered a couple of years ago. The one from the Santa Marta mountains, the, the blue bearded one. And these are really special birds that, that have like, that live in very harsh conditions because food in the mountains or, or flowers in the mountain are not that abundant like in other places. So these, these birds really struggle for survive. And, and they are beautiful, amazing, you know, like in the shape and, and in their colors. And it's a, another endemic from Colombia, the Buffy Helmet Crest. And, and with this bird, um, I finished my, my presentation about like my small journey or tour uh, in the Western and Central Andes. Fantastic. Very beautiful. It's amazing the, the, the variation of species to be found. I mean, I don't know, again, who has been to Colombia amongst the, the, the Zoomers here. But, um, but basically, when you go to a place like the rainforests in countries like Colombia, every bush has about 15 different things that you've never seen before. <laughs> or nothing. You know, it's either all or nothing and yeah, yeah. you don't know what to look at next and it's really just mind boggling the number of different birds. Um, Robert Oates, uh, also known as Robert Oates, uh, has a question. 
Hi there, Julio. How are you doing? Hi, Robert. How are you doing, my friend? I'm very well. Um, I don't have a question. I just wanted to respond to uh, something Julio said earlier in the beginning um, about hearing birds in the rainforest. And I have been on two birding trips with Julio so far in Colombia. And I think one of the great things about him is that because he used to be a musician, he has mm -hmm. a really great ear for hearing birds and memorizing their sounds mm -hmm. so you know if you go birding with him in dense rainforest he knows exactly what is calling around you so he can help you find some very very skulking species that other birders would miss it's i think uh, i think you know in birding I don't know how, I think maybe in, in some other places when they, where they have more like open forests or open areas, maybe uh, you don't rely from your hearing skill that much. But in, in places like the rainforest or, or the cloud forest even, the, then, or in the Amazons where, where there is a lot of ant birds, then hearing, I would say is... I don't know, like 70 to 80% of birding, you know, it's, it's beautiful and, and, and challenging, you know, uh, but you know, learning bird calls is easier than every people thinks, you know, it's easier. It's, it's just a thing of repetition, repetition, do it many, many, many times. And with time you, you will know the, the call. Well, I'm, I'm glad it's easy for you, Julio, because older birders like me, we're losing our <laughs> hearing, so we really need you to find the birds for us. <laughs> yeah, I know. Thank, oh, you. Thank you, Robert. I mean, that's an interesting point, though, about hearing birds, sorry about the motorbike outside. Um, it's a very different discipline, birding in a rainforest in Colombia, than it is to a lot of us in Western Europe, for example, or even North America, because you really have to do a, have a completely different outlook. What advice would you give someone coming to Colombia for the first time and birding in such habitats? Uh -huh. That's an excellent question. Uh, I would say like the, I would advise people to do a little bit their homework, you know, like, to study the birds a little bit. Normally, you know, whenever you contract like a birding company or, or a guide, normally you can ask those guys to, to tell you like which birds are you probably going to see. And it's very, I think for, for, the, for our visitors, they will enjoy a lot more if they study the birds. Why? why i'm telling you that because it's so sometimes it's so overwhelming the amount of of birds that you're going to see that probably if you haven't studied them a little bit then you won't remember them as 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 you would love to uh, for example that i think that happens a lot when whenever you go to a feeder and and you have i don't know 20 species of hummingbirds at, at the same time if, if you are seeing them for the first time without uh, studying them a little bit, then you probably are going, not going to remember much. So my, my advice is to study the, the birds the more you can in, in the field guide or with some apps. And if you can study them and listen to the calls, even better. You know, the more you study, the more you're going to enjoy your trip. Yeah, it is, it is a lot of, of work, actually, I suppose, in a way, because I go to, um, you know, when I went to Colombia, it was almost like starting again. I mean, I, I had my, my guide. Ah, that's so cool, yeah. <laughs> and there's about 100 species that look the same. I mean, look at this guy. I mean, this around. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's, it's really, you know, it's, it's like beginning again. It's like beginning, but it's very exciting at the same time. Because, yes. you know, you're seeing these things, some of them you've never heard of, and they've got some amazing names for us anyway, you know, some of the names of the birds. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
and you know it is really like starting all over again is there anyone else that has a question for julio what about you inge or nigel hello I know. there <laughs> how are you, how are you doing? doing hello alan alan Hello, hello, Julio. Hey, there you go. Hi, Alan. Hi, Julio. Thank you. That was a, thanks for that presentation. That was really great. Uh, I was in Colombia, uh, I think it's 12 or 13 years ago now. And wow, I was wow. in Bogota and I went north to Beard de Labor and uh -huh. I also went down to Leticia, etc. I had an absolutely fantastic wow, wow. time. I wasn't, I, well, I wasn't there for a birding uh, experience, actually, even though I did bird. I was there for a uh -huh. wedding. But to take one of the points that you've made, uh, yeah, and yeah. David was saying as well, the people were so unbelievably friendly. I, I didn't have any issues whatsoever. And that brings me to the question that I have for you. Or perhaps, yeah, yes. I mean, one of the perceptions that people have, particularly in Europe and perhaps in the States as well, is, is that Colombia is um, got problems with security, etc. cetera. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, what, what's, what's your view on that? How, you know, how would you sure, sort sure. of... Uh, what would you what would how would you comment on that sort of a concern okay, that okay. people have well you know you i know think colombia is pretty much like like many other countries for example i i feel way safer in the countryside you know like in the which is basically the places we as birders go you know uh you never i have been a birding guide for I don't know like for eight years now I never have a problem you know and in even in like in my regular life I have never been robbed for example <laughs> which I think I'm lucky <laughs> you know, no no even here in Colombia or in some other places that I have been to so I think if you move for example in the cities if you go to to a neighborhood that is not recommendable to go of course you're going to have problems you know uh, for you you need to stay and and ask the people where where you're going to be moving and and if they save you there is no problem then then you can trust that but for example i i tell the people if you're having you know like a a camera like this one in the middle of of the downtown then, then you need to be careful, you know, because probably somebody will grab it or, or think like that. But, but if you, in the countryside, I have never had any issue. Mm, and not also the, the, the other people I know in the industry. I, maybe I just once heard of somebody who got robbed uh, close to Barranquilla in a in a place that we normally go but we go for example these birders were birding by on, on their own and they didn't knew where they, they where they were so they were in a in a place that that we normally pass through and go into into a, a private place like into a private finca and these people were birding like in the in the middle of the road of a humble area and they get robbed. But besides that, I have never ever heard about any like safety issues. Maybe you can ask Robert or, or David who has have been here at this for twice, both of them, I think. And maybe they can give you also their impression because well, I'm 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 not, you know, I can't be objective. I live here. But maybe they, they can show you tell you something else. What, what, what? I, I, I'm not hearing Alan. I'm not hearing Alan. Uh, are you speaking, what? Alan? Yeah. yeah, okay. I'm speaking. Alan. Speak. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I didn't hear the, the last thing you said. I was just going to say that uh, my experience was just the same. I had no uh -huh. issues. Can, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I hear you now. Yeah, I yeah, okay. Now. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. I, had, I had no issues. I didn't see anything that was uh, uh, a problem, etc. Uh, it's just that there is that perception there, and it's uh, it's really yeah, it is. You know, yeah. the the we unfortunately we had like a a very 
difficult times in the 80s and the 90s. Yeah. yeah. You know, with, with all the, the cartel stuff and the guerrillas. But, you know, the, the, it was like very um, located in certain areas. And fortunately, that has, uh, I would say, almost is over. You know, the, I, I, I'm not going to lie to you. There is still issues in Colombia, you know, because, because as soon as you have, you know, like a not very big middle class, whenever you have like a huge lower class or poor people, yeah. when, whenever that's big, then, then you will have problems at some point. But I must say that is very like, um, we Colombians know where to move, you know? We Colombians know where to move. And, and of course, if, if you're going with a guide or if you're going to with a company, they, we, we always check the like the safety of the places we're going you know and and then that's like maybe one of the reasons why we have never had any problem and the people get like a good experience you know people get that experience that you had that that which is basically i would say the 99 percent of of the colombians here you can make a friend like this like actually like david was was saying at the beginning i didn't knew him um and um, you know, and he's like a rock star and everything, you know. <laughs> I and I, I just started talking to him, you know, like like if I knew him for many years ago. And and every Colombian or most Colombians are like that, you know. Thank it's you. Yeah, that's good. Thank you. Thank you, Alan. It's interesting because when I went, um, I didn't feel in da in any danger at all. Even when I was urban birding and we had two armed police officers with us as well, you know, I was more afraid of the police officers than I was of anyone else. They were, they were fine. They were pretty friendly. Um, what was also interesting is that the areas where the drug cartels operated in, in the forests, um, were actually by accident protected because these guys were working in these forests yeah. and you know making drugs and stuff and no one went there so therefore it became a, a haven for wildlife yeah it, environmentally they, uh, they they were you know like basically like virgin areas absolutely amanda um has asked a few questions well a question actually she um she's asking are there other animals to be seen apart from birds um she's yes. never seen a a snake in the world. Where, by the way, Amanda, where are you? Are you in the UK? If you can tell us or write it down, it'd be interesting. So anyway, what other animals can you be, can be seen? Yeah, in Colombia, the, nowadays, there is a lot of herping being done. You know, like, uh, there is a lot of people interested in snakes, in frogs, you know, like in, in, in these poisonous frogs. Actually, I have seen a couple of them in, in our tours, you know, like these Ofaga kind of, of, of frogs, like Ofaga Alemani, uh, these like, um, and, and of course mammals. There is a very nice place in the Eastern grasslands where you can go and you can see the, in the dry season, you can go there and see the jaguar, for example. You can see peccaries, you can see uh, ant eaters, uh, tamanduas, uh, well, a, a lot of, you know, like the neotropical mammals, you, you can see them there. And in many places, uh, for example, if you go close to Pereira, you can see the, uh, the red howler monkeys uh, also in the Santa. This, that one is like the most common monkey in Colombia, the howler. Uh, in Putumayo, there is a lot of, of tamarins, uh, smaller monkeys. And so the answer to your question, there is a lot of, of, of animals to see here in Colombia. And Amanda, if you go to Cali, uh, you've got the green iguana. Oh, yeah. Which is like three foot long. You can't miss them. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, no, everywhere, they're everywhere. <laughs> okay, now we've got another question from Robert, but before we go to the question from Robert, I'm doing something different with these um, in conservation with um, sessions in that they're going to be lasting about an hour officially, but then I'm going to have a bit of time at the end, like a bit of a party time where we have a gallery where we can ask lots of questions. And that's going to be an added extra because in September I'm launching the Urban Birder Members Club. And uh -huh. if you become a member of the Urban Birder, then you basically get this extra sort of, you know, that's cool. Bit at the end. So, so this we must, we must save something juicy for the end. Well, Robert's going to ask, he's always juicy, Robert. He's always <laughs> Save him for, for that. And plus, there might be some more questions. But let me ask you this, um, Julio. What is your favorite bird? Oof, that's the toughest question you can ask me, my friend. It's very hard because there are so many. But uh, if I have to choose one, I would say it's the harpy. The oh, harpy. Wow. Yeah. Absolutely brilliant. And if you could be anywhere in this world, you know, obviously COVID-19 stopping that, but if you could be anywhere in this world, where would you want to be? In Papua. Probably in Papua. Up in the Guinea? Yeah. Uh -huh. oh, fantastic. Um, <laughs> now, to just quickly finish the official part of this um, in conservation, we'll just let you know that on Monday, tomorrow at 7 o'clock, Per Olström is here. He's a Swedish ornithologist is talking about taxonomy he's going to be fascinating he's a really interesting guy Ooh. and he's going to be talking about the fact that there's species out there that we don't know about tuesday we have a guy called matt young who's from america he's a scientist he's going to be talking about finches he's a world expert one of the world's experts on crossfields and red red poles on thursday we have a lady called Miriam darlington who is an author. She's written a couple of books, including the, la the latest one called Owl Sense. So she'll be mm -hmm. talking about her writing on Thursday, sorry, Wednesday. Oh, I've got it all wrong here. Wednesday, I'm not going, <laughs> going back to front. Wednesday, we've got Harriet Mead, who's an artist, and she makes uh, models, or uh, art, should I say, out of wrought iron and, and out of um, scrap iron. Thursday, we've got Miriam. And on Friday, we have um, Stephen Moss, who is a really well-known director, BBC producer, and also a writer. And he's going to be talking about nature writing. So at this point, I'd like to say officially, thank you very much, Julio, for being here today. It's been really nice watching, looking at the birds that, you've, uh, that you can see in Colombia and listening to the stories.